Yeah, and uh, when you do real money, but even like that, even like that, my account, I started with 24 euros. I had 30 euros initially. Mm -hmm. I traded like 200 trades, just playing about, you know, with what I was learning on uh, technicals. Mm -hmm. I, I lost about six euros and I started with you with 24 euros. And uh, I, I I was following your uh, insight every week uh, yeah. on what uh, what trades are you taking and why. And it, it made sense for me. So I I remember I I had like eighteen successful trades in a row, no losses. Wow! And then I Brilliant. I I lost a few. Then I won another fifteen. Wow! So that was what made me take the leap because. In about three months or so, when I was following you, from that 24 euros, I had my account in euros. I have now one right. pounds too. Uh, I I I went up. Instead of blowing it, I went up to 70. Hi, my name is Liam Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at Trading180.com. And I have an interview with a Trading180 member, Daniel, um, who has agreed to do an interview and a review, I guess, of uh, the Trading180, the mentoring group and his experience. And he's been doing really well um, recently. And um, yeah, welcome, Daniel. And thank you for doing this. Hello, I'm, uh, I'm very honored to be here. Uh, I've been uh, with uh, trading trading uh, 180, I think, since uh, April last year. So, right. yeah, I'm, I'm in my first year. I'm still uh, a beginner, I think, with uh, compared to the other guys in uh, in your group. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I was still, you know, covering some of the basics when I... I was still learning the basics when I started with you, which... Oh, is, really? Yeah. Okay. I had... I didn't even knew some of the things you, you guys were talking about, including in the technical side. But you know that that uh, journey led to me going uh, going there. And I so I would say from the very beginning, whatever I'm I'm saying is not financial advice. I'm not considering I'm not considering myself uh, uh, an experienced trader. I'm somewhere between you know beginner and intermediate. Right. I started learning about trading about. A year and a half, two years ago. Okay. Covering the basics. And um, so I would say, let's considering how, how would I, how did I think about trading? How did I go into, get into trading? Yeah, how did you get into trading? Yeah. Yeah. I would guess. Uh, so I was, I discovered that, uh, you know, I can have access as a retail tra trader uh, on the market scene you know, around 2013. Okay. I was um, back in my home country. Now I'm in UK. I was in uh, Romania. You know? Okay. And um, you know, I was thinking, how do I get out of this uh, rat race? Of course. Because I I did everything the society told me to. You know, being a good student at school. You know, get on all those extra extracurricular activities. You know, go to a sports club. Go to educational competitions yeah. I had a scholarship outside my university I went to university I went to okay. the ar army service you know I worked for the state I worked in private I had my own business I really I at that point I, I couldn't really show for the amount of effort I put in everything I was doing something that was making me proud and I was thinking am I supposed to struggle like this all my life mm -hmm. so what what is the solution to that? Uh, I, I've I've been in contact with successful uh, people, you know, people from the elite in my country in that at that time through my father, and I've seen the difference between uh, how these guys were making a lot of money and how the majority of people, you know, working at the nine to five is a huge difference. If you have money, you don't make working just a normal job. You have to think outside the box. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I was thinking about it, and it was an open question. And then what happened? Something, uh, something happened, and it was that uh, light bulb for me that said, "Okay, this, this is I like this. I, I, I I'm interesting." It, you know that uh, movie, The Wolf of uh, Wall Street. It appeared, Wolf of Wall Street. Uh, yeah, yeah. Appeared, appeared in 2013. Yeah. Yeah. And everyone was excited about it. It was everywhere, and people were talking. Mm -hmm. And that movie, I think, is 
there are lots of movies regarding trading um, from Hollywood, uh, quite a lot of good ones. But this one really just put me to the floor. I, uh, I, still, <laughs> I still, I still, I was, is, is that real? You know, then yeah, I, I found out that, you know, Jordan Belfort actually is a real trader, a real person, yeah. is based, based on real uh, facts, yeah. Yeah. some of it. And from that movie, you know, I said, okay, I want to find out more. And then I, I looked for other movies, you know, I saw Boiler Room, it was in 2000. Uh, yeah, I remember Boiler Room, yeah, I remember that. With Giovanni Ribisi and Vin Diesel. And Vin Diesel, and, yes, yes. I, I, I was, you know, stunned to see Vin Diesel in that movie. I was thinking, is he going to take a, a pen or a cup of coffee and destroy someone with it? It's not shit, I don't play that. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, they, and then in that movie, I saw a reference to another movie, another classical, uh, uh, Wall Street in 1987, with uh, Michael, yeah, Michael Douglas, Douglas yeah. Char Charlie Sheen, Martin Sheen. Yeah. And then they made a sequel in 2010, Wall Street, Money Never Sleeps. Mm -hmm. You know, and then the big short margin call. Sure. Yeah, margin call. Yeah. So I started, you know, getting into that uh, vibe of what is trading, how these guys are living, you know, the the lifestyle. And wow, I was. And but anyway, the Wolf of Wall Street just had a huge impact on me. And then there was another one, older one in 1983. If you remember, trading places with trading Eddie, places with Eddie Murphy. Eddie Murphy. Um, he placed it uh, hum, homeless person who yes. is uh, mentored uh, you see he's mentored uh, the, you know that mentor thing uh, is uh, also a big big point in my life because they make they make a bet don't they oh yeah and dollar they, bet yeah they make a dollar they, bet. Yeah. yeah they teach him how to trade and he turns out to be a greater success yeah. than his mentors yeah so okay we, we could say you know are this these are just movies you know imagination fantasy but are these things really happening uh, only in movies? Because these two movies, I can, I, I will give you, I will give you some parallels with real life traders. Okay. Put, putting aside that Jordan Belfort actually is a, a, a real person who is involved in trading, was involved, and he did some quite interesting things there, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, you know. I noticed, and probably most people who who listen to us, they they. Uh, observe the and that's the most interesting thing there are the, the most successful traders businessmen you know whatever uh, they have most of the times they have humble beginnings mm -hmm. and uh, sometimes even more interesting they manage to lose everything and then, <laughs> yeah and and then they make it back even more yeah and uh, also there are people who can even make a challenge out of it and I've seen that too they repeatedly start from a, like a very modest amount of money mm -hmm. and they multiply it and they can repeat the process. Yeah. And I, I know that, that's, that's crazy. I mean, there's that, that something about it, it's something about it. And it made me, made me think, you know, so, um, you know, Warren Buffett, another inspirational figure for me, he said that at one point that also helped me in my journey. If your salary is your only source of income, you're yeah. one step. You're one step away from poverty. Absolutely. And uh, Absolutely. why? Why did I go into trading? Because this this skill for me is is an amazing thing to have. So is um who said that wealth is what you have left over after you have lost all your your money. I learned it from Joe Vitali, but oh. that's the thing. Yeah. So after you lose everything, you still what is your wealth? Mm. Is so. What is your wealth? Is the skill. That's the wealth. So whatever you have in your head, this skill, you can take it with you everywhere around the planet. Uh, if you have a, a, a computer connection, a laptop, or phone, or whatever, and you have this skill, you can make money all over again. You can start all over again. One hundred percent. That's nobody. That's... Nobody can take it from you. And that's that. What made me think about. Uh, Trading, you know, and uh, around that time also, uh, trading kind of become a thing too in my country. I was opening uh, internet, you know, browsing and ads coming up for a uh, oh yeah, bro advert, broker, yeah. yeah, brokers, yeah. Companies, you know, after this morning, 
looking looking at the demo account, looking at the webinars, looking at the sources of education. So, regarding uh, this uh, movie that I was mentioning, Wolf of Wall Street, you know, there is this scene um, where uh, one of his friends and his partners, Donny, he he was also uh, one of his neighbors. He noticed this guy, you know, um, Jordan Belfort, with his lifestyle, his car, his mm -hmm. clothes, and everything. And Donny was working for a furniture business, and he is intrigued. Yeah. And he, he approaches uh, Jordan and he asks him to teach him and to mm. hire him and to let him be part of his um, circle. Yeah. And that changed his life. Mm -hmm. That changed his life. And now, uh, the thing is, uh, later, um, I, was, uh, as I was at work, you know, I was reading, I think, the Daily Mail and I saved that article. I just ripped it from the newspaper because okay. I, I was amazed. I was, this is another... Wolf of Wall Street, but this time it's from UK, and <laughs> and it's so it's so so similar is is just blowing my mind, and I'm going to tell you exactly. In 2020, you know there was a very big fall in oil. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so what happened in 2020 around March uh, March April? Mm -hmm. You have nine traders operating from home, communicating on WhatsApp. Mm -hmm. And they were led by their own mentor, uh, is a, 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 an a elite old school trader. His, his name is Paul Cummins. Yeah. And he, he was one of the top traders in gas and oil commodities. And he learned his um, skills in, in the pits of London International Petroleum Exchange. Mm -hmm. And these guys managed to push oil prices in the negative. Uh, on Brent, it went down to, I think, 17. Anyway, it was crazy. Yeah, and they, they that made... during COVID. That was during COVID, right? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I, I heard, the, I heard, it. I read about it on. Uh, yeah, he, I read about is, it. Uh, is the story of the Essex boys? That's yeah, the Essex the boys. Absolutely. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> from, uh, from well, in the outskirts of East London. Yeah, Essex. Yeah, yeah. They were part of a small uh, company, limited company, Vega uh, something, Vega or something, and they managed to push the prices down, and um, they make about half a billion dollars in less than a day. Crazy, isn't it? These guys, so nine private traders, no bank, no hedge fund, no no institution. These were guys like us, like our group, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, not all of them were experienced. Some of them were experienced. Some of them were in their 20s. Mm -hmm. So, But the best part about this story that I found for me particularly was, it was interesting and it kind of ties, ties in the Wolf of Wall Street story. One of these traders... Um, before this thing happened, uh, had a Greek name, I think, Ari. Uh, it is said he was working in a supermarket uh, parking lot, you know, pushing uh, shopping trolleys back into place, you know. Really? The, yeah. And this guy spots one of these more advanced traders who was already part of the group in his fancy car. Mm. He approaches this guy and he said, "What you are? How are you affording this car? And what are you doing? You know, the same thing that happened with Donny and Jordan yeah. Belfort. Yeah, Jordan Belfort. Yeah. Like in, the movie was made in 2013, and this thing happened in 2020. So you, it's crazy. It's so similar. It's so similar. Mm. Mm. So it, it it changed his life. That guy." Uh, who was working in the supermarket, Ari, he made like, I think, 75 million. The, the guy who was driving the car, the fancy car, now he's uh, uh, racing a sports car. So he's living his dream. Yeah. So you see, it's not just in the movies, it's, it's in real life. In real life, absolutely. I, and, I have a similar story. I didn't make, you know, hundreds of millions or anything like that, but just from the perspective of reaching out to somebody, um, and is the only person I ever reached out to personally um, on my trading journey, which was Mark Chapman. You know, I uh, sent him an email, right? And you mm. know, it's not necessarily in person, but he was the first person that, because I traded, you know, maybe about a year or two before him, saw a couple of his videos, knew you, you just, you know, when you when you hear something and it's just totally different from what you see online. And then um, I reached out to him. I emailed him and just said, same thing, pretty much. Just, can you help me? And uh, and he did. <laughs> you know what I mean? And, um, you know, I'm here now. So, um, yeah, I definitely can, um, can uh, uh, I, I relate to the story. 
I definitely relate to that. And, and yeah, uh, we, we both of us we, we are part of Mark's group, and yes. um, I remember I'm not going into, into details about this story, but I remember Mark in one of his uh, teaching videos he speaks about one trader that he met in a pub and he had a similar story this guy was so successful and he made he was in his yeah. 20s and he had yeah. Mi yeah. millions and he lost everything and yeah. then he made he made it back, made it back again yeah yeah even yeah. even more and that's crazy but that is so so inspiring yeah and and then i, I i'll go to to the next story that i have regarding uh, another success story uh another guy who started like relatively humbly but this guy also be became even, in my opinion, even bigger than his mentor because this guy's mentor is uh, none other than George Soros. So, okay. you know, George Soros and Black George Soros, yeah, yeah, yeah. But who I'm speaking to uh, about is a, a, a trader called um, actually one of the best money, money managers in the world is worth currently about six point eight billion dollars. Wow. His uh, his name is Stanley Druckenmiller. Yes, I have heard of him. Yes. So Stanley uh, was already a very very good uh, student at this. He had his own, uh, I think, small hedge fund. He was uh, noticed and maybe headhunted by George Soros because he saw the value in this guy and he mm. he he got him in his own team and uh, him and uh, George Soros. They are behind the black wednesday in 1992 yes, yes uh, even yeah. where they bet 10 billion uh sure, the pound didn't they or something 10 billion 10 billion against the sterling yeah. the bank of england was yeah. uh, thinking to devaluate the pound and they made 1 billion in one day yeah now it is arguably is george soros idea is stanley's is both of them but this guy he had his own thing on the side he had his own company it's called um Duquesne Capital Management and responsible for several billions in assets and he was earning about 30% annual return which is very good for any anything you can imagine yeah. in 1999 so this guy he was already accomplished he was a legend but in 1999 he shorted 200 million tech stocks and he lost 600 million and he ended the year down 18% so it can happen you know to Anybody. People who exactly yeah. happens to everyone, right? But what was inspiring? This guy, you know, he was already like in his older uh, years, and he he reached out to two young talented uh, stock pickers. He reached out for fresh new talent. Mm -hmm. he, he told them, "Look, this tech stock for me is is hard to understand. Help me understand it. Help me devise a new strategy." And and, and mm -hmm. guess what happened? Next year, they they end up thirty five percent profit so that what that is uh, what is that saying to me it's saying mental flexibility no matter how good you think you are you always learn you always have to learn always. even from, from younger people even from people you think they are maybe beneath you no they they have their own version of course but uh, so this guy that's his rate of success I, I don't know if anybody could equal that but uh, there was an interview with him, and uh, uh, that was the inspiring, most inspiring part of it. There are a lot of successful traders, but this guy, the, the reporter asked him, oh, "Do you think you are a genius? How do you do it? What is your secret?" You know, mm. and and that that's the inspiring part. That's the part that I can even maybe is a bit similar to the trading places movie. He said, "When I was young, I was no, I, I'm no genius." I was a mediocre student. I was not in the 10% of my high school class. My stats were so mediocre that I went to bow down school because it was the only good school that didn't require SATs. Mm -hmm. to, and it turned out to be a very good um, and fortunate event for me. And uh, regarding why I am so successful when I am trading, because he said, I had an incredible passion for the business and the, the thought that every event in the world affects some security price somewhere. I just find it incredibly intellectually, intellectually fascinating to try and figure out how and what uh, is the next puzzle and where it is going and what is going to move what. Mm. So remember when we... we 
we talked first time I took, you asked me what, uh, why am I, what I find about trading interesting and why do I want to trade? And I told yeah. you for me, for me, trading is kind of like the art of war is uh, trying to see to the fog of war mm -hmm. and see your op opponent's uh, movement and get gather the information and deploy your forces, your money in this example, in the most mm -hmm. efficient way yeah. to, to get the, get the biggest bang for your buck. Yeah. Yeah. So Stanley uh, also said, uh, and that's interesting regarding to mentorship. He said, the first thing I heard from my own mentor when I got in the business was that this bulls make money, bears make money, and pigs get slaughtered. Slaughtered, yes. Uh, if, you are, if you are early in your career, as I am, and you have a choice between making fast money, you know, higher pay, but short term, and choosing a great mentor, take the mentor every time. Mm. So that's the thing. We have our own success stories, you know, in, in our group too. We okay. have a, lots of good traders. I I know we have one of our own who is like a partner in a hedge fund already. Or Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's yeah. unbelievable. Yeah. Drew, yeah. And when he came to you, he said in one of his uh, uh, webinars, uh, he said that he was kind of a beginner himself when he came to you. He wasn't mm. really advanced, but he, he learned and in yeah. a couple of years he improved. And he's doing he's doing what he loves. Yeah. And he, I, I'm pretty sure he's doing quite, quite well. I mean, I, yeah, he's, he's an amazing uh, story as well. Just to, uh, Excellent story. Yeah. Amazing mm -hmm. story from, from, from him. From Drew. Yeah. So, for me, so for me, uh, a lot of, um, so, you know, when you are trading, when you are, especially when you are learning how to trade is that learning curve and it can be overwhelming and you, you face losses no matter what, you know, mm -hmm. and there's so much to learn. And uh, like a year ago or more than a year ago, I was looking, you know, just like everybody at the trading forums and I was hearing uh, or reading about traders speaking about their technical strategies in yeah, Europe. Yeah, you get lost in the sea of all that, right? The that that technical jargon, man, I, I was feeling, oh my God, I, I, I can't understand most of what these guys are what language is that I <laughs> they they must be so smart because they are using these words I can't understand. I was yeah. with a dictionary next to me. And then sometimes they were speaking about the return rate and I was they were happy with six percent or twelve percent or ten percent. Mm. But it's good. I mean, it's good. It's not all negative, but yeah. it's a bit more than the bank. For me, trading is a lot more than 6%. If if I wouldn't be trading to make just 6%, really. And mm. I, I'm i not making 6%. I'm I'm making a lot more. But okay, we, we could put it to beginner's luck for me. But nah, it's not beginner's luck. You're doing it consistently. You've been doing it consistently. In, in my first year of real trading, starting with you, uh, I I made back the money I paid for the lifetime subscription several times, yeah. And I never blew my account. Brilliant. But I will go. I will go back to that uh, later uh, in the in the story. Of course, of course. But uh, the what I want I want to end up the question is like um, how do you become how do you become a good trader because i said i don't think i think i'm about 10 percent of what i need to be just to be a decent trader okay i'm not a decent trader i, I i'm i'm just you know starting to you know feel it at my fingertips I, I get some good moves but i'm not here there but at least you know i'm not losing more than i'm making but i'm not making what i hope i need to be mm. making yet but i am getting there slowly but i am Brilliant. So I think I, I would say I would say the step one is education, understanding the concepts, understanding what you are reading, what you you are exposed to, because once you have understanding, that leads to your own creative trade ideas, and then you apply them in your trades and you turn them into something profitable, and it is not necessary to overcomplicate and overthink and get lost in dozens of details and having to resort, resort to many indicators, either technical or fundamental, because when you overcomplicate things, and I see that including in our group sometimes, and I've seen it everywhere, you overcomplicate things, you, you you look at too many things, Yeah, you end up on analysis paralysis. Yeah, you analysis know? paralysis, 100%. Yeah. Or, uh, if, or burnout. 
Or burn out. Yeah, or burn out. yeah, because yeah, you're right. Yeah, because mentally you're you're thinking too much about this and that and you know all the pairs and all the different combinations and possibilities that could possibly happen. Yeah, and you get burnout. Yeah, I've been there. <laughs> no, I, I, I happen, I happen to to know quite a few traders myself. Uh, some are uh, less successful and some are uh, really, really good. And I had a chance a few times. It's very difficult to, to 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 do that, but sometimes, a few times, I got the chance to look at really, I mean, I mean, top traders, you know, millionaires. Mm-hmm. Look over their shoulder. Look over their shoulder and see a few seconds what is on their screen, how these guys are trading, and if you get, you will see that they don't waste too much time looking at a ton of indicators, mm-hmm. and they act, they they move fluidly, and they seem to have a sixth sense of where the prices are heading. Mm-hmm. They they don't they don't spend fifteen minutes or I don't know fifteen hours to look at a hundred indicators or hundred. They know, they feel it. Mm. So that that comes with practice. That comes with. Do, do you know the first time? Do you know the first time I heard that? Right, Mark told mm-hmm. me he, he worked with a trader. Um, I'm not going to mention his name, but he is a definitely a very high net worth uh, individual, and he was um, he uh, worked quite closely with him. He was headhunted by him, anyways. Um, you know, uh, quite a big hedge fund manager in the UK, anyways. He, um, again, as you say, looking over someone's shoulder and seeing what they do technically. And you wouldn't believe at the time when Mark, you know, when he, when he told me that um, the trader doesn't trade candlesticks. He, tra- he, he looks at a line chart. Do you know what I mean? He, was, he looks at a yeah, line chart. Yeah, <laughs> You know, he doesn't, doesn't waste time looking at, you know, pin bars and dojis. It's a different, you know what I mean? It's a different thing, right? What what I find uh, so about trading, the, there is you know is good news and bad news. You know the bad news is no single indicator really will make you rich. You know some of them work better than others, but the good news is is no single way to make money. There are multiple strategies that work. Hundred percent. It's, it's, it's not only one. There are multiple ways to make it. If you are getting good at it and you you get good at managing your risk and understanding it and developing that sixth sense mm-hmm. then yeah yeah it goes so anyway from here how did i get to find trading 180 i think that would be like our yeah, next yeah. step yeah step how did you find trading, trading 180 yeah so at, until this point okay i i got the motivation you know i start okay i'm in the right di- right direction i started to look for sources of uh, education so First, I said, okay, I need to, to I'm, I, I'm considering I, I'm a beginner. I want to start from zero. So I found this site. It's called babypips, babypips.com. Babypips, yes. Yeah. So I like about it that it's organized so much as a school. Yeah. It takes you to grades. You have like small uh, quizzes. And it basically takes you from zero and explains in a simple way. Mm-hmm. So, so after I was learning a lesson on baby pips, I was looking on YouTube to expand that lesson, uh, looking at for the videos or channels that were explaining and demonstrating how to use and how to understand the concept concept that I was just learning in that mm-hmm. on that side. So taking you know from the simple to, and uh, this led from one thing to another, you know. Mm-hmm. So what I learned, and um, I learned, I learned that um, in order to have the best chances to open and uh, initiate a successful trade with probabilities on your side, mm-hmm. you have you have to do market analysis, which was compared with a chair with three legs. You have uh, technical sentiment and fundamental analysis. You mm-hmm. remove any of the legs of that chair, it becomes unstable. It's not a proper chair anymore. Mm. So I will go to like to each of them and uh, how that led to to you regarding technical analysis. You know, a, a trader looks at candlesticks, at chart patterns, Fibonacci, support and resistance mm-hmm. levels, trend lines. Everybody looks at that. We know that. Mm-hmm. And if everybody looks at the same things, then of course very few people get proper results. You know, mm-hmm. and then you get these various indicators, and there are hundreds and thousands of indicators. You know, some better than others, you know, they were tested them. You can test them. There are tests. They are similar, some of them. 
But in my opinion, before I even met you with that, my opinion was that uh, when devising a technical-based uh, strategy, only technical, uh, you have the best chances if you if you understand that technical indicators indicators they measure and look at different sides of price price action. So what I'm saying, we have trend indicators, we have momentum or oscillating indicators, we have volume indicators, we have volatility. Mm -hmm. So I was I was thinking to myself, a good technical strategy should employ one of each, and. Uh, your strategy, yeah, you you do you you do take into account that, and I love that about mm -hmm. you, the T eighty strategy. You, I, I don't think you ever mention it directly, but I understanding some of your strategy now, at least the technical part. You look at an indicator regarding each of these things. You don't dismiss it mm -hmm. because the, there is this war between from the fundamental school of thought and technical school of thought, and they dismiss each other. Oh, that is not working. Oh, that no, actually. Uh, both of them are working and if exactly you are... they work together this is you know yeah. it's not you know they're not diametrically opposed it's um that they work together you know and this is how we uh um but you'll find that a lot of um for some reason retail traders seem to think um fundamental analysis doesn't work right and i can understand why you know there's a lot of uh, miseducation on there but you know, like as you say, there are yeah. three legs to the table, right? There's sentiment, yeah. fundamental, and technical. So we we do use uh, we we do use technical. Uh, some of them we look at them to exploit them because we know other traders will be looking at them and they will move around there. What I like about your technical part of your strategy is that you 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 put a lot of years into it. I know. You tested a lot of those indicators and you tweaked them. You you put cer certain settings on them mm -hmm. and you integrated it in a larger strategy. And I was thinking about the same thing before I met you. Uh, of course, it would take me 10, 15 years from now if I didn't meet you. To, to <laughs> so, yeah, but uh, that helped getting a good confirmation, a good entry level with higher chances. Mm -hmm. And those things are in a part of the uh, group lessons, and you know it saved me a lot of time with that. You know, yeah. and then then we have sentimental analysis. You know, uh, so technical analysis information you find on YouTube, plenty. Sentiment analysis a bit less. Mm. Do do we look at that? We look at market market sentiment. We discuss the economic news. We try to understand if the market sentiment today will create a new trend or influence in our fundamental bias or not. Mm. So basically is the buying the rumor and selling the fact. That is the buy the rumor and sell the fact, absolutely. That, that's that's proper sentiment analysis. I would put it in those like few few words, you know. Mm. If the data is not supporting the narrative, then what what a trader will see a technical trader? You will see fake outs, you will see traders squeezed out of their positions. Mm -hmm. That's what's happening. So if you only use technical and you don't use proper sentiment analysis, this is what happens. Mm. But those those are the first two legs. And now we go to the third one, the fundamental analysis. And that is what led me to your channel, you know? Brilliant, brilliant. Wow, what a journey. <laughs> what a journey um, you've been on. And um, that's, a, that's, that's, that's amazing. And um, yeah, a lot to kind of digest there. But as you say, um, I came to, you know, it's, I guess, a similar um, conclusion when it came to fundamental analysis. And again, one of the first lessons I actually learned um, from being very heavily technical uh, based before, again, I met Mark was um, one of the first lessons he taught me was it was the euro dollar. And he actually told me about interest rate divergences. Right. He didn't say it as a divergence, but pretty much one, you know, um, uh, it was when the euro in 2014 or 2013 um it started introducing quantitative easing for the first time, which we know now is designed to um, uh, depreciate and devalue a currency. At the time, I had no idea, you know, he spoke to me about it, but I was so focused on technicals because of, you know, my, my history. I kind of dismissed fundamentals until it must have been about a year afterwards. And if you want to look at a euro dollar chart, 
Yeah. Just look at what happened from 2013 all the way to 20, like uh, end of 2014, 2015. And you'll see it dropped like it dropped like maybe 2000 pips, something like that. It was massive, massive drop. It was the first time that, it, it, you know, I, I guess the central bank, I think the first time anyway, or in recent history had introduced quantitative easing. Mm -hmm. And so that made me really it really opened up my eyes to the fact that there are things going on beyond the price chart that are actually moving price that is actually moving price and it's not the technicals you know and so you were saying that you discovered uh say discovered fundamentals and um you know in in, in a similar way right on your interpretation well i exactly i i i was at a point where i had the uh, three question marks uh I heard, you know, bits and pieces you find on YouTube. Uh, people mention these things, but they don't go into details. And made me, made me curious. So I had, I had three concepts at that time that I, I was really wondering what is this about. So I was looking about to to find out about how to do proper uh, fundamental analysis. And very interesting is that um, I was hearing about this concept of smart money trading and how that is tied up and so central to fundamental analysis that was uh, one so i wanted to learn trading techniques using fundamental analysis and um also i th there was this concept that was called uh, stop hands and i've seen this guy who before he was going to work he was waking up 3 hours before he was going to work in the morning he was specialized specialized in stop hands, and he was making somewhere between five hundred dollars to a thousand eight hundred dollars every day when he was trading, and he was go then going to work. And I was thinking, how is this guy facing his colleagues? I mean, I I want to have this skill. I want to pop up that phone, you know, and everybody anyone pisses me off. Let me show you how much money I make made today. Don't make <laughs> me angry. I can go on without this job. You can't. <laughs> so every I had day. this. Every day it was crazy, but he wasn't explaining how right. he was he was saying stop hands, but he wasn't explaining how they are functioning. I mm -hmm. couldn't understand who, exactly how what they are. So I was looking for this this thing, smart money trading, stop hands, fundamental analysis, and on your channel, on your YouTube channel, you speak about all this and you speak about even more. I, I had no clue about what CPR is. I even never even heard about it, mm -hmm. what the CPR is, not to mention other things. So I found even more than I was uh, expecting. So I started uh, watching your videos, you know, and uh, I see, okay, this 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 content. So I'm watching one hour of your videos. And sometimes, you know, other, on other channels, you watch one hour of uh, YouTube videos about some trading thing. And you realize that out of that hour, you are left with something that you could say in two phrases in, in mm. less than a minute. Mm. So when I'm watching your videos, either YouTube or on our own group is a, a high, high consistency, rich content about you want, you take everything, you simplify it, but you get left with a lot, you know, and I remember this was legendary. I remember I was standing on my feet in the middle of the room. I, 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 I put, I put the lights off just to concentrate on the screen. And I was watching mm -hmm. one of your, webinars uh, one hour long it was called uh, forex fundamental analysis full course right. one of the older ones like three years ago but yeah. you, you know the one yeah another one yeah you were explaining everything around how things tie into each other or why we should look up around the gdp inflation rate uh, inflation interest rates and uh, also you give advice about good sources of information like uh, Bloomberg, Reuters, what bank reports, where, where are they? I didn't even know that banks, they, uh, they are uh, into trades and they publish the trades and why they do it. I have no, no clue. Trading economics calendar, another thing that I'm looking every morning when I'm waking up, the first mm -hmm. thing I'm looking at is trading economics calendar, you know. Yeah. And uh, I was floored and I watched that thing two times and I wrote, I start writing things on a piece of paper, which is the first time to devise uh, this trading strategy. I still have that paper. Really? I still have that. It's crazy. I look at it now and oh my God. 
you know so i subscribed to your channel and um, i had a, i had a trading account already opened with oanda because it allows me to trade with small amounts of money mm -hmm. like if you want to trade one euro and you want to trade uh, 10 cents you know you can open a trade and you can risk five cents 10 cents 20 yeah. cents so yeah you... brilliant that's the best that's that's, that's the best way to start so, best way to start. they do have demo but um they want to have some money in it you want to have you know you want to have i skin in the game yes i wanted and i man i imagine i like that's not so long ago it's like a year and more than a bit more than a year not less than two years I, I was, you know, trading five euros and it was going against me 20 cents and I was sweating and I was looking at, <laughs> looking at, I was looking at the phone for three hours, you know, around the laptop. <laughs> what is the, I couldn't, I said, this is not, this is not healthy, you know, mm. uh, but it was that adrenaline that I wanted to get used to because on a demo, you don't get that feeling of yeah. rush. You don't. You don't. Not real money. So yeah. on, uh, when I traded on a, a demo, I made like 6,000 euros in uh, five minutes. Mm -hmm. And uh, wow. so, uh, Yeah, and uh, when you do real money. But even like that, even like that, my account, I started with 24 euros. I had 30 euros initially. Mm -hmm. I traded like... 200 trades just playing about you know with what i was learning on uh, technicals mm -hmm. I, I lost about six euros and i started with you with 24 euros and uh, I, I i was following your uh, insight every week uh, yeah. on what uh, what trades are you taking and why and it made sense for me so i i remember i i had like 18 successful trades in a row no losses wow and then I, Brilliant. I i lost a few then i won another 15. Wow. So that was what made me take the leap because in about three months or so when I was following you from that 24 euros, I had my account in euros. I have now one right. pound too. Uh, I, I, I went up. Instead of blowing it, I went up to 70. Wow. 24 to 70. Yeah. And I wasn't part of your group. I was part of, I was a subscriber to your channel. And I was trading according to what you were saying. And I know on YouTube, you don't give all your ideas. You give, give some of them. Of course. Yeah, you can't give but, everything on YouTube. But, you know, that that was uh, what made me notice. Okay, I'm taking more I'm taking more profits than losses. I had some small losses. It is true that, you know, I wasn't trading properly and that I had like very large stop losses or even no stop losses. Because if you trade five euros, you can afford the price to go against you you know two three hundred of course yeah pips you know and then it goes around you know you can't do that now with the proper money but then it was another thing but still it, it helped me a bit psychologically mm -hmm. you know, to to so and that that made me think okay i should join because this this is good stuff this is working this is working so uh content also very good quality i was finding in one place all the stuff that I was initially going all over the YouTube to find, and I wasn't satisfied. You made me understand, you know. You made me understand those concepts, and I was discovering new things that I wanted to learn about. Brilliant. So, um, also at that time, I, I had some issues, some small issues at work. You know, I have a good job, but it's a bit stressful, and it can be dangerous. Yeah. And I... You know, is this this feeling that maybe some of our listeners have? You, you are terrified that if something happens and you lose your job, mm -hmm. you don't know what you'll do. Mm -hmm. And uh, with you, I got in that place where I wanted to be. And uh, Warren Buffett sums it very well. He says, "If you don't make money while you are sleeping, you will probably be working until you die." <laughs> yeah. So yeah. I. Since I started with you, I'm making money when I'm sleeping. Yeah. I am I'm making money on my annual leave. Brilliant. Uh, it's a good I, feeling, uh, isn't it? It's a good feeling. I stopped all my colleagues, most of them they do overtime to, to make ends meet. So I'm not doing overtime anymore. Just today, today, I closed some oil positions that I have, like uh, some of the worst ones that I have on top. Just a few of them. I made the money. I doubled the money for today. I made the money I would make working today i just made it from closing a few positions Brilliant. just the worst ones you know 
So, you know, um, what was I going to, how, how fundamental analysis would help with technicals because that's the point of it, you know. If you trade in, if, you, if your technical analysis is online with the fundamentals, ideas, you tend to get the best uh, results. That, that was one thing that really helped me since I am employing your strategy. And also, I am very grateful that uh, I was saved a lot of time in learning and testing a whole lot of indicators that uh, they were there for me to to study. You have some really good indicators uh, mm -hmm. used in, on your technical part because, as I said, they cover every, every side of the uh, market. Mm -hmm. And uh, they are... Um, they are already tested. They are tweaked, and I I looked uh, at I looked at them. They are tested by other traders uh, to see how how they do, how efficient they are, and they have quite high scores. You can even employ them on their own, and you can get some good results. I am also so I I I don't have to go to every one of them. There are too many of them. Some of them they show the same thing. I am I, I am inquisitive by nature, so I do play a bit uh, on uh, paper money or demo account with other type of indicators or similar, just to see if I can come up with uh, something else, uh, you know, uh, another type of strategy, just technical. If I have some interesting results on something, but I have to test it more. If I have something interesting, I will bring it to you. Okay, we, we we know we can discuss it. We can look at it. You know, definitely. Yeah, it's yeah. always good to 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 do research. You know, one hundred percent. One of the things I would caution against, though, is mm. is sometimes if it's if it's working, don't you know? If it ain't broke, don't fix it, as they say. Yeah. And you know, and so one of the things that I know, for example, is that a lot of traders do tend to um once they have something that you know they 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 always we always want to improve things right you know see if we can get the best 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 you know tweak 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 no, and I, I i i'm not saying improving key 80 key 180 strategy because we is mostly concentrating on longer terms i was yeah. thinking if i can mess about about with some indicators for scalping mostly so that's ah, a okay so yeah, that's scalping is something that I do sometimes just for fun, you know, very very small amounts and strict strict risk management. It's just like a bit of uh, fun, you know, just a right. bit of uh, messing about, you know. But right. it's not my main strategy. But you know, about scalping, scalping, uh, I've seen people doing it very good, but it involves you staying in front of the computer oh, six yeah, hours. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. that's why. You got watch. Some... You got watch price. You know what I mean. Like you know, you're in a minute chart, and yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Scalping. Mm, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I tried no. it when I first, uh, you know, uh, started trading, and um, you know, you got to have a certain mindset. You got to be a certain type of person, a certain type of personality, in order to really, um, you know, be a scalper. I think. And... I I do like it, but I would I would just do it for fun or when I have some free time, you know, just to to have a look. Play just for the fun. Of it, you know, just for the fun, but not as my main thing. Mm, yeah. So, so what was some of your light bulb trading moments? Oh, that's good. That's good. Uh, actually, two of them, uh, I uh, they came quite recently. Mm. They should have come earlier, you know. But uh, <laughs> I, uh, you know, I I started employing them, and uh, the results were like. Um, quite impressive and uh, very fast uh, so one of them that I, I i i have trades on them right now and they work very nicely is how to enter a trade using a uh, fractional lot sizing i would say okay. uh is um you name it I, I think i have another name for it basically when you divide the trade in smaller parts and yeah. it hits at different levels so you don't yeah. In order to minimize the risk and increase the chances of hitting break even faster, and yeah, you know that's one thing that I learned and I'm playing with it and I love it and I learned uh, where fair value is and how to leave a trade to run because I wasn't doing that and then I was kicking myself. Oh, why did I exit? You know, mm. take profit too early, you know, and leave some of the runners go and they they usually get better results than what i was hoping for you know in mm -hmm. most instances so they, even if it's a small win it still adds up and absolutely 
Okay. Every penny counts, you know what I mean? Yeah. Every penny it counts. Works. Yeah, I mean, last two days I, I've taken some small, but still it, it adds up, you know, it covers. And yeah. another one, and that's a big one, and uh, I, I kind of took so some... Let's, so, so, so before you go on to the next one, so just for the, for the for those of you who are listening... The light bulb, yeah. Yeah, the uh, light bulb moment is, is um, yeah. you know, what, what you're explaining is, is that... Um, you know, when entering an, into a trade, uh, what I, you know, do and um, what Daniel was talking about is basically is dividing your position. Let's say, for example, most traders will enter a position at, you know, maybe 1% at one price point with their stop loss below price. Whereas um, what I, you know, um, teach traders is to, if you're going to risk 1%, in fact, I you know, while you're learning, I always say risk less than that, right? But if you are going to risk 1%, as an example, why not break that 1% down into several trades? So maybe you're entering at three um, positions, right? Let's say, for example, you know, each is a third. And then you're not entering at the market. So you enter one position at market, the market order, right? Then what you've got is a 50% retracement buy or sell pending order depending on which way you're you know if you're buying you got to buy pending order 50 percent retracement and um a lot of times you'll find that prices actually retrace back down to that 50 percent right daniel um oh, yeah. you know, and, and give you a better price and then also as well you've got a third price where um it's right at the basically the 100 percent retracement yeah. where it's right yeah. at the bottom if you are looking at the chart right in front of us, US dollar, the Japanese yen, you see a stop hand there, you see. So you see exactly what you are saying about. And I am in that. I am in that from the top and then from. So I got hit back in. I, I am in two positions on US dollar, Japanese yen. Right. I am in Brilliant. Yeah. So, so in I, fact, I'll, I'll just illustrate this. So what you're yeah. doing is for the, for the watchers um, is you're basically uh, dividing the position up into three or even maybe four positions if you really want to. Um, let's just do this quickly. So one second, where am I? Here we go. So three positions, three entries. So at the close of the candle, right, is your market order. Then what you're going to do is place one 50% and then 100%, you know, sell, sell pending orders. And what you'll find is that prices tend to come back to those at least the 50%. And what it does, it gets you a better risk reward, right? And so you've got, you know, that, let's say, for example, your stop loss was, you know, I don't know, somewhere like maybe half the ATR, maybe about 40 pips above or something like that. And let's say, you know, that's one of your entries. Yeah, right now, you'd be in some decent profit. That would be one of your entries. And then you would also have that as one of your entries, which now is a prof a way with all profitable trades, but you can see the risk reward if it does pop back up to the uh, the absolute highs, right? And so, um, yeah, that's a technique that I've used for uh, several years. And um, yeah, it served me well. It's definitely served me well. Yeah, I, I am in that one in, uh, in the two positions. I almost got hit in the, the one on the top. But yeah, yeah do you I, know I, what I did? You know, I got in on the stop hunt and then on, on the Monday, guess what? It, it stopped me out by about maybe about seven, eight pips. Because it, it mm. kind of went higher on the Monday, and then it rolled over, right? So um, I managed to. Um, that was actually a break-even trade for me um, because the first uh, stop hunt that happened, I think it was the Friday. Um, I managed to get a two to one in that position, and then I had two positions open, but those two positions were stopped out on the Monday. So it was a break-even trade, and then it rolled over. So yeah, yeah, happened, yeah. Right? Well, yeah. On on pound in the same story, but yeah. I'm on two positions. The same, the, exactly the same. Oh, you got in on that. I got in on that as well. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I got in on that right up so here. We, yeah, we, right see, up we, here. we we think uh, we think alike. We, we yeah, we yeah. Because I was thinking today about the, about the pound, and I was thinking the strength came from nowhere, right? And um, you know, mm -hmm. in terms of the move and you know the parabolic move, and so yeah, we got. I got in up here. I was also watching that um, pound Aussie, but it didn't really um, do anything. It kind of you know still faffing about. But I was uh, yeah. looking to buy the uh, the yen anyway, and so yeah, the stop line happened all the way up here. So you got in on that as well. Brilliant, excellent, yeah. 
Excellent, excellent. So definitely profitable trades there. Um, yeah, so I, the second I have seen, I so, have seen, I, I'm happy that I have seen the setup just the way you've seen it and it works so nicely. So yeah, is money is totally. money in the bank? I look yeah. I look at my button, it's on the green. I love seeing that green. I love that. <laughs> oh, you love seeing the green. Right. We do have some reds, you know what I mean? It is oh. red days, let's, it's let's, red weeks, and it's even it's even red months, right? Nobody mm -hmm. makes money every let's, single month, not even the banks, right? So oh, yeah. but it's 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 about mitigating the losses and capitalizing right. on the right. on, on the profits, right? That's the main thing. Speaking of the red, uh, I will go to the next light bulb moment. Yeah. I'm I'm going to to admit, you know, I had I I made uh, quite until recently, I had this uh, rookie bad habit of uh, trading. As I was saying <clears throat> earlier, I was trading with small sums of money, mm -hmm. so frequently I was having very large stop losses or no stop losses at all. So oh. I. I yeah, yeah, so uh, since I started, you know, being profitable, I started uh, putting more money in my account okay. and taking taking bigger trades. And that changed the story a bit. So I'm going to, to, to admit, you know, my mistakes and I'm yeah. going to tell exactly how it affected me, what what happened. So um, it led me to some painful losses, not too big. I'm still profitable, but I give some of the profits back, uh, let's, let's say, 30%, 40%, still I would have kept them. Mm -hmm. But it, it, now looking back at it, it was so stupid. I got trapped in some positions for weeks or months, and I refused to, to take the loss. So I said, no. Ah, so you got uh, caught in your position, CPR. Uh, CPR, yeah. Yeah, and, CPR. yeah I, sh I should know better, isn't it? Mm -hmm, and, you exactly. Know, the problem with that is that you have your, you have your trading capital locked in. You have to add, add more money not to be stopped out or Absolutely. to be able to take more trades, you know. Mm -hmm. Another thing, uh, you have to pay uh, daily unnecessary broker fees on your Absolutely. open position sometimes. Uh, almost all the times, almost all the times, those trades actually reversed in my favor after some time. Mm. And also, I added more positions uh, so I can mitigate those uh, losses. Yeah, but but uh, the way uh, you know I those those losses that I previously taken you know those they, those was, were added losses. So mm -hmm. even if I was, I was mitigating, it was eating from the profits. Even if that trade turned to be very right. good, right. I wasn't enjoying the fruits of the, the the idea of the trade because I was giving it back. Mm -hmm. So most of the times I was exiting on a small loss or even break even or you know very small profit because I was terrified you know, I was going to be caught again. I was terrified I'm going. That's typical uh, you know stop loss. It's lots, lots of version bias, right? It's lots, lots of version bias. So. Uh, Okay, I decided. Uh, I decided I have. I rather trade smaller positions, enter uh, like a fractional trade type of uh, entries, and mm -hmm. um, so I can. What that meant it was uh, allow me to have uh, more uh, acceptable stop losses. Mm -hmm. So now, right now, if a stop loss hits and I got hit lots of times lately with uh, some stop losses, they were small, you know, very very mm -hmm. small. So I am comfortable with that, and I see it as an opportunity to get back in the same trade at mm -hmm. the next best, next best level. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah. eventually, the trade will turn where you want to, to turn if your idea is correct, and yes. you avoid it. You avoided those losses to add up and it from your profit. And yeah. what hap what happens to me now? Yeah, I might take a few five, six stop losses, maybe sometimes in a week or even mm -hmm. three. But one good trade, only one good trade, covers five to ten those stop losses. And sometimes you, I mean, even today, today I, I covered ten times the stop losses I took all week in one Brilliant. trade only. Brilliant, and that is key. And this is what I, I I I say as well. And this is what helps with fundamental analysis, or what fundamental analysis helps with, right? Because if you're a technical trader, you pretty much a following price, which then means that if prices are going down and against you, you know, if you were buying at a level, um, it's like, where do you then start to go short? 
But by the time then you start figuring out, all right, I should go short, then guess what happens? The market reverses on you. Whereas, whereas if you're fundamental trader, a fundamental trader and understand value, you know, one of the things that nobody knows is where the price is going to turn. You have to accept losses like, you know, night follows day. Yeah, it's going to happen. Um, and so sometimes you can have a trade idea where you might, you know, where you're thinking to yourself, I know this is a bargain area, but it might take you maybe two or three trades in order for you to, or maybe, maybe four or five in order for you to really get uh, the most out of that. And then on top of that, um, you know, fundamentals helps you to hold the trade because, you know, a lot of traders will, um, you know, maybe take a few losses. And then when they're in a profitable trade, they, what they'll do is they'll they'll come out of the trade um once they maybe make back their losses so that they're back back to break even not really knowing that fundamentally in fact that could that trade could go you know 100 200 300 400 pips it could make maybe 10 15 times you know your trade and so traders kind of get out of the trade because of the recent you know pain of losing maybe three or four trades and then being down and they'd rather be you know maybe at break even by the end of the week do you know what i mean yeah that's what happens. So since I, I changed my strategy and I employ these common sense things, yeah. I'm seeing the results. Yeah. Yeah. Brilliant. And I I will never take take a trade again, especially on currencies uh, without uh, that. Now regarding commodities, my approach is a bit less on the technicals and more about the fundamental. Right. Uh, because with commodities, me I love trading commodities. Um, is about seeing the value seeing the range seeing the historical prices yeah. and seeing the world so some of the some of the commodities you know like oil i'm um i'm on uh i usually train tra uh, trade brent uh, oil not west okay. texas but uh, yeah if you can go that. yeah uh, oil copper uh, silver gold but let's say oil we are looking at oil you know mm -hmm. there is human life needs oil uh, you need it in every aspect of your life so when i was seeing Price is starting uh, going down quite uh, recently, and going be below eighty. Yeah, so below the for eighty. Me, yeah, yeah. For me, that was a light bulb because I know OPEC is not going to to be happy with that, and uh, I know China is reopening, and not only China, the whole world economy. Yeah, summer is coming, tourism is is, is growing. Uh, we need it. We need it to learn, and you see what happened uh, recently. So. From uh, from eighty down, I started buying. Everyone was panicking and selling because oh, fear of recession, bank and all that. Me, I started no. I said oil might go down to sixty to fifty five, wherever it's going. But I'm going to load up on it. So I started exactly. exactly I remember like you saying this. I remember you saying this oh, yeah. in one of the uh, in one of the calls that we had, maybe a couple yeah. of weeks ago. Yeah, I remember. So I am in oil or. I, I I had the positions on the way down from 80, all the way down, all the way down. Every 100 pips or so, I was putting a small position. So right. the thing, when I'm trading commodities, I'm not going full uh, full uh, with full ammo on, on the first position. I'm putting, a, I'm putting a very small trade initially. If it yeah. goes back up, okay, it's a small profit, but it's profit. And uh, the lower it goes, I, I start increasing it uh, slower because I don't know exactly where it's going to stop. I need no to one be able exactly. To, yeah, yeah, yeah. I need to be able to afford uh, keeping those positions open. I don't want to close until it reaches like a very, very critical level. But yeah. I, I know even if it stays lower, it's not going to stay at sixty. Maybe more than two, three weeks or so is impossible because the world doesn't function like this, you know. And, so, and, that's, and that's the level of confidence that your fundamental yeah. analysis gives you, right? Because, you know, what you would be describing, I guess, some people might say, for example, it's a martingaling, right? You know what I mean? You're martingaling yeah. down, et cetera. And um, to a certain extent, um, you know, it, it, it is, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? It, it, it is, but you're doing it with confidence. And I wouldn't advise anyone else out there to do it, right? Unless you are really confident in your fundamental analysis. Because otherwise, yeah. if you're just using technicals, it really, no. you know... I mean? No, that wasn't a technical. I, I wasn't yeah. really yeah. looking for technical levels. I knew I knew the value. You yeah. know the value of exactly. something. Value. 
and I know I know how much my account can afford, so I know how to position. I know I I'm not uh, over really? uh, over buying. You know, I just if it it can go down to seventeen, and I can still hold it. Yeah, yeah, I can Brilliant. afford. So yeah, Brilliant. Brilliant. So Brilliant. now you see it went up up, and I started adding back on the way up because I know the new trend is forming. We have signals that show us the new trend is mm -hmm. forming, and I start adding back up. Mm -hmm. So I, I even added up positions from 80 to 82. Oh, and right. I, yeah, yeah, and I sold them today and I got some nice money on them. And I, all my positions that are left are around, are below 80. Mm. So I'm going to hold on to these positions uh, probably around 94. Yeah, 94, 95. I think uh, Citibank yeah. and uh, uh, yeah. Goldman Sachs are talking about, yeah. you know, about the 95 now to $100. No, you know, about I... I don't care if it's the second half of the year. I don't care. Mm. It, I, I'll wait because it's, it's money in the bank. Yeah. And and it's the same with uh, copper. Now copper starts to go down. I I am still on profit on every position on copper. Yeah. I got in on uh, this as well. Yeah. I am down. So when it started falling down, I started buying and I have yeah. positions all the way down to the lowest possible part. I, okay. I, I added more. So I could sell everything now. I would be on profit. But yeah. I actually, I'm looking for, I, I'm hoping the price keeps going down because I want to add more. Yeah. <laughs> See, I, I'm in, I'm in um, only one position. I took took profit on one position here. Yeah. Um, I, I wanted to get in on four positions, but mm. I only ended up getting in on two. And so uh, one of them is profitable. I can't lose. In fact, if even if that no. position comes down, like you said, I'll just add in. No, it, it might come down. Very little, but in the long term, this this on this trade, I'm going to wait no matter what. Yeah, I'm going to 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 sell at the somewhere closer at the high. I'm not sure four point uh, two or something. Uh, what is on the day? So you can, if you go on a higher time frame, it can give us a bit more uh, insight on. Okay, so yeah, yeah, around four point two, four point three, maybe could be a good uh, place yeah, to enter. Yeah, yeah, around here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah post Done. Maybe even more. Uh, I'm sure it it will go even uh, more than that. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Long term, copper is um, you know, there's there's copper supply issues, etc. And um, it, even a more, lot, yeah. a lot yeah. of demand for copper. Yeah, I'm sure it will it will go probably to even five. If you if I'm willing to wait it out in, enough, I don't know, but definitely I'm not selling below four point two. Definitely not exiting. Yeah, low. Yeah, definitely and, not. And again, um, I think uh, you know, the, again, the fundamentals and understanding why, and really fundamentals, um, lets you, I guess, understand value, right? Which is the value of a commodity, the value of an exchange rate, the value of a stock. And uh, I know um, that there are traders out there who, uh, you know, believe that uh, price will tell you everything you need to know. And that's just not yeah. true. It's, it's, yeah. it's, it's, you know, I mean, it's like, it sounds good, right? It's a nice meme. But, it sounds good, but it's not yeah. true. It's but just price, not true. price tends to be cyclical. If you, if you go to higher time frames like weekly or monthly, mm. you'll, you'll see that sometimes you have these huge drops that are yeah. caused by fears. Mm -hmm. And uh, they they never stay too much on that, and usually they go higher than they used to be after that crisis. Mm. It's the typical uh, cycle of uh, you know boom bust and recession. It usually that's what happens. And I had the same idea like a few weeks ago on silver. It it had a huge drop, mm. and uh, you see you see you see the lower go on days. Yeah, you, you see it went. Really, here you see the lows. You see yeah. those lows. Oh, I was buying them. I yeah. was buying, I was buying from, I don't know, from 22 down all the way, all the way down. And then, then with the money I made on that silver trade, that it was the trade of the March month for me. Right. It, it paid for my two weeks of holiday. Brilliant, brilliant. So and you can see the stop hunt, right? Very, very nice. Oh yeah, I, I, I caught that one. I caught the next one too. I knew that, and you see, yeah, I learned how to. Nice. I, I learned from you. I learned from Mark. I learned how to see the value. Yeah, and I, I learned not to panic. I learned to, to hold, to yeah. hold. 
and not to get greedy, you know. I, I knew my account can take even. I was hoping to get even lower. I was okay. Right. Yeah. 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 Brilliant, man. And um, so to wrap this up, brilliant. Yeah. Thank you very much. But how would you describe the difference between learning from videos on YouTube yeah. to actually learning from a mentor? Well, that's very interesting. You know, you could uh, you could watch the videos and you will get a very good insight of on uh, proper proper trading and uh, comprehensive trading. But uh, you know, it's about what the mentoring is actually is for uh, for a trader. And in my life, in, I applied mentoring in other areas of my life, and every time the results change my life 180 degrees. Because I came from, from being broke, from being depressed, from having failed relationships, all that I changed through, through mentoring. Incredibly, everybody's telling me, Daniel, you're not the same man. What happened to you? What happened? Really? That's, that's so, great. So I, I was, I told you, I, I was aware of other traders with more experience, like more money, better skills in technicals than me, way better, you know, and they were losing vast amounts of money and time. And they had no satisfaction or optimism regarding their trade and their future. And they were putting me down too. They were saying, if I can't do it, you can't do it either, you know. Really? Uh, yeah. yeah. Wow. This, this type of people, you know, they, they, they are in all our lives sometimes. And for mm -hmm. me, um, for me, a mentor is someone who is successful in their field, someone who has something to show for it, you know, something who encourages you and sees the potential in you. So that's, you know, that's the difference between trading from what you learn from videos and being part of a group and having a, a mentor, you know, because uh, a mentor is someone who will be there for you and uh, encourage you and give you answers for your questions so for me actually a mentor is not actually someone who is necessarily physically present in your life sometimes it is someone who is teaching you something through a book through a video even that even that is even better than a maybe a friend who has no ambition and he tries to pull you down <laughs> when, when you try to rise up and they get suspicious and jealous uh, yeah. and you know because you're trying to overcome you know in my life I, I i try to keep people who are only better than me in some areas people that i admire people that can teach me people that can show results and people who genuinely care about me you know people that encourage me and they they believe in me so coming to t180 trading to be more specific about it, you know, I came to you as a beginner. Mm. And I was still learning as a, some of the basics. Some of the basics I knew, some I didn't know, no. And mm. now I'm making steady gains. Now I'm understanding what I'm looking at when I'm seeing price action. I know why it's doing what it's doing and where is it going in the long term. I am enjoying trading. I find it satisfying. I never blew up my account. I have increased it. I can prove it. As I told you, I covered the lifetime subscription plenty of times, three, four times in my first year. I am withdrawing money now from my profits. And once this oil and copper, especially the oil, if it hits where I want to hit, I'm only trading from my profits. All my initial investment, I'm putting it back in my bank account. I'm very, very close to it. I'm working on it. I no longer fear what can happen to me if I lose my job. I don't long I don't do overtime anymore. I can at least survive from from trading. I don't know if really properly living. I'm still learning. I have a ton of things to learn in front of me. I know that. Mm -hmm. I still have problems with one commodity. Uh that commodity is called time. time. I wish more yes. I wish more time to learn more and test more and practice more and be on the charts and hunt for trades, you know. Mm -hmm. But I am I am more confident in my skills as I've shown. I no longer stress what happens to my trades. I don't look at the charts every five minutes. I look two times a day if I look at this enough. I'm no, I'm winning more than I'm losing. I'm eager to learn more, to practice more. Yeah. So that's what you did for me. And what the group did for me 
in T180. We have very good traders there, way better than me. Traders who are willing to give sound advice. Mm. The best thing, the best thing I can't emphasize that for me is it, it, only that makes all the money. It saved me a ton of time. Yeah. A ton of time to do research. I don't have to go hunt for news all over the place. We have those uh, T80 channels where the information of the news is posted daily. Yeah. We have we have traders discussing those news, those ideas. We have yeah. charts posted, trade ideas. Mm -hmm. You have you have trade alerts uh, ideas. You have access real time. Mm -hmm. You you see. So we have like minded. Trade traders putting in information and ideas, and I made a lot of money uh, uh, on um, trade ideas that uh, me I didn't have time to look for them because mm -hmm. I I'm working, I'm sleeping, I have to do other things. I, I I'm not course, full time. Yeah. If I would be full time, maybe I would be, but I am not. So it's more heads working in the same direction. So anytime you, I have a doubt or anybody, I can ask a question and some of the traders will answer. You will answer. Actually, you will make a video about it. So yeah, yeah. what can I ask for more? Really? I, uh, it, it's the best place you can, you can be. That's, that's uh, how you would wrap it up, you know? Oh, brilliant. And thank you so much for your kind words. And yeah, um, you know, the, the guys in the group, uh, shout out to, uh, to Ken and, uh, Spencer and, you know, Lawrence and Mark and many of the other guys in there, Igor as well. Um, so many. And um, I just want to so, say, you know, uh, Dr. Ninja is in there, you know, pops in there every now and then and things like that. And, um, you know, I want to say well, just uh, thank you for, you know, to you as well, yeah. contributing to the community. From from a trader like me, who I, I said, I still, I, I don't consider myself to, to the level of the traders in that room. Uh but you know, I'm putting a lot of uh, effort as much as I can, and I love doing it. My my advice to whoever is listening is that if you put in the work, you will see the results. You will see the results even way faster than you expect. It's crazy. It's crazy, and I, I love it. I just love it. You know, I'm so excited. I'm so excited. That's brilliant, mate. That, thank you so much. Much appreciate. Uh, I appreciate you too, Leon. Thank you very much, and You're I appreciate very welcome. everything you do. Everything you do for me, you are like, like, like you are like a brother, honestly. Thank you, man. Thank you very much, and uh, thank, thank you. you for doing this interview. It really means a lot. You I know, hope we, we'll, uh, I hope in a year from now we'll do another interview, and I'll come with more motivational yeah. uh, uh, insights. More gems, absolutely, definitely. You got a long absolutely. way to go. We got a long way to go. Absolutely, Your lifetime. You're with me for life. Yes, <laughs> you know what I mean. We'll so, do. Um, yeah, we'll we do. Got a long way to go. Good journey. Um, anyway, awesome. to, to the listeners, I just wanted to say uh, thank you for listening and making it this far. Um, and if you do want to join Trading 180, uh, go to the website. If there is an opening, uh, you can join. If there's not, um, there will be uh, an opening at some point in the future. I don't tend to have the doors open at all times. I like to keep the group quite small and focused and concentrated. And um, I think it works you know, well better that way. So uh, again, I want to say thank you to Daniel. We've had some technical issues. This interview has taken, I think, probably about nearly two hours, right? Going on, yeah, maybe about oh. two hours or something like that. But um, uh, yeah, thank you very much, Daniel. Um, thank you, Leon. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. And uh, take care, guys, and speak to you all soon.